1990, I guest curated a show for the state of California called uh, California Artists Making History for the Sacramento History Center. And I had hoped to open it then, but life gets in the way, so... Hi, I'm Terry, and this is The Art of Toys. And um, the Art of Toys is a uh, gallery where the artist either creates their art with toys or their toy is an art, or, the, or their art is a toy. And then we also have vintage toys in the back and a small case of it. And then we do have toys that we call gifts. We do a theme show every month. We have both local and international artists involved in it. It started out with more art than toys, and it still is more art than toys, but uh, the toy parts kept us alive. So uh, media does not know what to do with us. Uh, they want us to be a toy store. Just had somebody quoted as a midtown five and dime. It may cry. <laughs> but, um, so all these different artists come in, and there's not a lot of places for toy artists to be, so I'm really adamant that we keep it that way. We also are an online business, but it's um, this is more fun for me. I collected dolls from a young age. And then I was in the toy business for 14 years. People ask me where I find, how do, how do you find all these people? And um, well, I've been keeping track of them for a long time. So like that little pig there, the, the rubber creatures, I have one that I bought 25, 30 years ago from, from that artist. Um, that's kind of how it evolved. But this is what I want to do. I love it. I know everybody here. I work here. Uh, I live downtown. I, so I walk here every day and all the street people and you know, the neighborhood. And um, Sacramento is just a great little city. It's all about the artists. So I do have their bios on the wall so um, people can look and read about them. Um, in this day and age, you cannot, in the old galleries, you wouldn't let people have contact information. Well, it's useless to try not to have that now because they can just do it on their phone. Um, so I give a bio when somebody buys an art piece, they get a bio and they also get the provenance, even if it's a $15 art piece, just so they understand that here's the documentation and how to do it. I have a lot of kids collecting art now, which is really kind of fun. Chris Cinder is a character. Um, he. He totally believes in his art and doing it. He keeps the prices really reasonable because he wants to produce art and sell it. He's not interested in having it hang on a gallery wall at enormous prices. Believe me, I've tried. Um, he's not interested in doing prints. He would rather keep just making them. And he does a lot of uh, little craft shows and stuff on his own where he sets up a table. But he's kind of just carved a niche in here and he's got a lot of collectors that come in once a month to look to see what he's brought in. And um, we do a big show with him in um, May. It's actually the robot show, but he gets a good portion of the walls and stuff. But he always has a little space here. He has a story behind every single piece, mm -hmm. which um, I can never capture from him because he doesn't write them down. Okay. <laughs> He'll start telling me the story. I'm like, Chris, write it for me. I'm old. Come on. You know? and he just starts going on and on. So he does have backstories with, and, and with the cardstock pieces too. And then Laura Lynn, who's on this wall, I just think she's one of Sacramento's treasures and kind of the new upstart artist. She paints small paintings for our um, fairy show. But because it's a retrospect show, we were able to get some of her bigger pieces. I just, I love them. She's just really detail-oriented and does a great job. And she's still reasonable, so it's not I told her, I better buy one of your, I have a small one of hers, but I don't have a big one. And I'm like, I better get one before I can't afford you anymore. <laughs> and she thought that was funny. <laughs>